good morning my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Line. I decided to take this show on the road today and go across town and not only see a place that has some historical significance, but a historical story that kind of influenced everything that would to come for an entire novel franchise. I'm going to tell you about how Johnny Weissmiller became Tarzan and how every time you hear that Tarzan call, it's his voice. Here we are. Well friends, here we are today in the heart of Culver City where at one point this was the movie capital of the world. Even though Hollywood was always tagged on at the end of pictures as made in Hollywood, most of the movies, most of the TV from like the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s, all that was made here in Culver City. And today, I'm at Sony Entertainment to tell you a story about what happened here in the early 30s. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Here before you stands now Sony Entertainment, but at one time, this was the original entrance to MGM Studios. The same driveway right here that Clark Gable, Myrna Loy, Greta Garbo, William Powell, Gary Cooper, they all would have driven in. But today, we're only talking about one man, Johnny Weissmuller, and the day that he became Tarzan. Now this was a little confusing at first because all of the entrances that now that you drive into were not the original entrance to MGM. They have closed off the original entrance over here. And so I finally had to find a woman telling a story about her mother standing outside these gates waiting to get autographs and she said it was at the corner of Jasmine in Washington and here is a historical landmark sign that says on this site in the year 1915 was founded let me get you a little bit more light the first motion picture studio in Culver City built by Thomas Ince in 1919 Samuel Goldwyn succeeded to the title to this an adjoining property for his production company. In 1924, Metro Goldwyn Mayer acquired ownership. MGM Studio stands on 175 acres of ground, which once was part of the vast La Bologna Rancho, whose settlement began in the Spanish period of California history. Now just to think, wow. So the story here, is that one day, Johnny Weissmiller, who eventually became Tarzan, had a pretty interesting day here. He came here to meet Clark Gable, and at the time, this was the studio entrance, and there was a guard shack right here on the other side of this, and the guards would not let him in. And so Johnny Weissmiller did know Clark Gable, but just didn't have an appointment. So he, uh, was walking around the outside of here and a guy came up to him, knew who he was and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to get in to meet up with Clark Gable. And the guy said, well, what are you doing? Why don't you, uh, why don't you go around the, the side? There's 75 guys in line waiting to meet, um, or waiting to do screen tests for Tarzan. That'll at least get you in the lot. So he decides to do that. He walks around the corner and he uh, waits in line does a screen test for Tarzan. There you can see a little bit of the inside. And um, he, um, they say, you know, can you run? He goes, yeah, I can run. So he runs. They say, can you climb a tree? He goes, yeah, I can climb a tree. So he climbs the tree. They say, can you swing on this vine? And he goes, yeah, I can swing on that vine, but I'm not gonna swing on a vine 45 feet high, but I can do it, you know. Um, he even said, I learned that when I was at the YMCA as a kid. So they decide that, hey, 
he's going to become Tarzan. And they take him in a room and they sit down and they say, so what's your name? And he said, Johnny Weissmiller. And they go, well, that's not going to work. That's, your name's too long to fit on a marquee. And uh, he goes, what's a marquee? <laughs> Johnny Weissmiller didn't know what having your name on a marquee meant. And so a guy sitting in the office said, don't you know who that guy is? That guy was an Olympic hero. He's set most of the records for swimming. He won five gold medals and a bronze medal in the Olympics. <laughs> and uh, the guy sitting in the office said, okay, you can keep your name and uh, let's throw some swimming in the movie. And that's how he became Tarzan. And that actually was a gig that lasted him 12 motion pictures. Uh, Johnny Weissmiller would go on to eventually marry Lupe Velez, and I think I mentioned in a, a previous vlog that that was kind of a, a bad relationship for him. They were, uh, it was kind of reported in the news quite a bit that they would get into domestic disputes, like hitting each other, but it was kind of rumored or kind of reported that almost every relationship Lupe Velez had that going on where she was kind of aggressive. And so this was the day that John Weissmiller, wow, became Tarzan. And I just thought that was so cool to, um, to know that, you know, basically Clark Gable's whole career basically started at MGM. That's where he started making his real money, started getting starring roles in pictures. And uh, to think that this was the actual gate where he would have driven in every day. That's nuts. This is another one of those situations that really makes me wonder when it's such an iconic gate, why a company like Sony that's in the motion picture business wouldn't have preserved this and why they wouldn't have kept it the original entrance. I mean, I guess there's a reason or maybe it was just too thin and narrow, but you would think just for historical sake, they would have kept an entrance there and maybe kept it locked. But as I drove around this place, I noticed there's like three, maybe four other possible entrances that you can drive in. And one of the gates is actually known as the the Capra gate. Okay, now before we leave, I do want you to notice one detail. Look it up there on those lights. Do you notice those MGM lion heads? At least they kept that. How cool is that? kind of sad just to look at this and looking at the old photographs and MGM's gone One of the stories that I did read is that there was a uh a repair shop or a uh, like kind of a gas station that was located right here. Now it's like a uh, kind of a parts place or an auto repair place that uh, Clark Gable used to drop his cars at off at and then walk inside the gates. Wow. You can never be amazed at what you see in Los Angeles. There's a picture of, it looks like Barbarino, Travolta's Barbarino up in that window. That is one monstrous vase looking piece of art, isn't it? Holy moly. I wanted to walk us in this little Elvis Graceland looking gate because there's a kind of a bike trail that starts over here and it has a little bit of tile work. I thought we could take a look at it as we're walking down through here. Anytime I see stuff like this, I like to pull off and take a look. You just never know what'll be uh, included, you know? people's different visions of Los Angeles and how they see it. Pretty cool sometimes. There's LAX. Hollywood. Is that supposed to be Gene Autry up there? Nice. Interesting. Wow, that is very interesting. 
there must be a story to all these. I wonder how they were selected or how people decided what they were going to put here. If there was a criteria or must be some sto sort of story here. We've almost come to the end of it. If you're wondering, this is kind of, this is the water that divided or it ran alongside Desilu Studios back in the day. If you ever saw my MGM 40 acre back lot, that's, this is all part of it. It all goes up back through there where that was. Cool. Okay, well, we're getting somewhere, okay, because now it says it's rivers of the world. That explains the whole theme here. Oh, and by the way, I am uh, no longer seeing the lioness. We just, in the long run, I think we want different things for uh, our lives and wasn't gonna work out really, so we get along great, but just wasn't gonna work out, so why prolong it? Wow, that is awesome. Look at this, these intricate birdhouses. That is great. They have like little elves and all kinds of like little scenes. That is so cool. Little trees and everything. And fully functioning, not just for decoration. There we go. Didn't expect to see that today. Well, what's your story, friend? What were you doing while I was gone? Hey there, buddy. What were you doing while I was gone? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? My buddy. Well, gang, I'm going to call it a night. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the old gates of MGM where Clark Gable and Myrna Loy used to drive in, as well as Joan Crawford and the myriad of stars in the Hollywood galaxy of MGM. I want to thank Ann Santos and Stephen Wilson for becoming new Patreons, and thank you all for watching. See everybody tomorrow. Have a great night. Good bye. Now I'm off for a walk. Someone